So define the Tesla is a unit or okay, so we're gonna talk about this unit. If you ever forget F equals B I L sine theta. Okay, so we say oh B is what? F over I L sine theta. I remember talk about all of this. So this uh unit of flux density, so unit of magnetic flux density, which is B by the way is the force per unit length because F over L. That's the first one we want to look at, lah, F over L. How about the rest? Leh? Force per unit length on what? Lah? Oh, wire. So force per unit length on a wire or you say conductor carrying a current of 1 amp. What else do we need to say? Mm, oh, we need to talk about the angle. Okay, so this current got to be Perpendicular to the magnetic field, so we say normal. Normal means perpendicular. Uh. Okay, perpendicular. Normal to the B field. There we go. So I kind of shorten and shortcut and put everything into one sentence. But this one, the three marks, it's an older pass here, so their mark scheme is slightly different. One mark comes from force per unit length. This is the first one. Acting on a straight wire carrying 1 amp of current normal to the B field. This whole thing they give one mark. Okay. And if you mention if it's a unit of magnetic flux density, oh, then it's another B1 mark. So yeah, to be safe, you mention everything. Lah. Unit of magnetic flux density, but also you must mention F, I, L, and the angle all in one to define the Tesla, the unit. Okay, next. A charged particle travel with a velocity in a vacuum. Enter a region of magnetic field. Zoom, 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 zoom. Where's the magnetic field? Ah? You see how the thing curve? Hmm. Particle, you can do some quick thing. Oh, you see the particle curve downwards, right? Means there's probably going to be a force pulling it down this way. So you can already kind of arrange your fingers. Mm, direction of a uh, positive particle. Ah, positive particle moving that way. Middle finger down. Oh, magnetic field is either into the page or out of the page. So that is what you can guess. Actually, hey, let's, let's, let's just check. Lah. Okay, so particle move to the right. You point your middle finger to the right. Thumb down because force is down. Thumb. So your magnetic field will be coming right at you. You would be pointing to yourself. So B is out of the page or out of the screen coming at you. I don't need to draw all. I'll just draw a few dots here and there. Okay. So magnetic field is normal to the direction of motion. They already told us that. Okay. The path of the particle is in the arc. Only when it's in the magnetic field, it will bend because there's a force. This force only acts if you're inside them. Ah. If you're outside already, you see the, 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 the line becomes straight here. So, okay. Good to know. Explain why the path of the particle is the arc of a circle. You got to talk about circular motion again. Why? Ah? Because of velocity and force is perpendicular to each other. So the velocity will keep bending, trying to follow the direction of the force. Okay, so they describe circular motion over here. What we can say is that the magnetic force, which is our thumb, when we try to uh, align Fleming's left hand rule, magnetic force is always perpendicular. I just write this symbol uh, to mean perpendicular. Uh, not You write out the whole sentence. Perpendicular to the velocity or you can say direction of motion. Where the particle move, force always perpendicular to it. So, the magnetic force provides what we call the centripetal force needed or required in order for it to move in a circle. So, centripetal force needed for... A circular path. Mm, this is how you can talk about it. The reason why objects can move in a circle is because there is some force that provide the centripetal force. And this is a throwback to our uh, last time, our chapter 7. So both uh, answers, I mean both marks, one will come from, if you talk about always perpendicular, force perpendicular to velocity. Uh, either use perpendicular or you say normal. Force is normal to velocity. You see the mask can use that a lot. Or perpendicular also can. Then you talk about magnetic force provides centripetal force. Oh, then that one is A1, the second part. Oh, yo, why my pen becomes so thin? There we go. 
So what provides centripetal force? Magnetic force. Next, proof. Show that the radius is given by this expression. A. We proved this before in the theory section. Do you remember how to do it? You can pause the video and see if you remember how to do it without checking your notes. So, like I said, whenever you come to a circular motion kind of question, they will always ask you to do a proof, whether it's gravitational field or um, electric field or... Oh, yeah, no, electric field don't have... Gravitational field or magnetic field, you have to remember, we just now said magnetic force provide centripetal force, right? So we can say BQV sine theta equals to FC, so MV squared over R. The V in MV squared over R is a tangential speed, okay? So you got to check and make sure that this is tangential speed. Make sure this one is also tangential speed. So you check and see. Tangential, correct? Okay lah. Tangent ma to this point. Okay, can. So we can proceed to cancel and rearrange. So both sides you can divide by V. So you will lose a, a thing there. Uh the direct the, the, the angle between V and B is perpendicular. They already say ma normal. See? B is out of pitch. And then the V is pointing to the right. Okay, la, it's normal. Normal. Perpendicular. So sine theta is gonna be one. So all you have left is VQ equals to MV over R. Rearrange a bit. R equals to MV over BQ. Yay! Okay, this is one mark only. La. So unfortunately, you equate magnetic force with centripetal force exp uh, expression, then okay, la, one mark. Alright, now we come to the application in particle physics that we talked about earlier in the theory. A uniform, uniform magnetic field is produced in this beautiful region. But look at this. What is this? Look like plants, like ferns. The magnetic field is normal to the page. A, at point X, a gamma ray photon interaction causes two particles to be formed. By the way, in case you forgot ASAD, uh, gamma ray is neutral, right? Means, at first there is a gamma ray that is moving in a straight line. Like that lah. Then suddenly something happened, interaction, then got two particles come out. Mm, that's particle physics right there. The path of this particle is shown. One spiral here, one spiral there. Suggest why each path is a spiral rather than an arc of a circle. You know the difference between spiral and arc? Spiral is like this. Arc is just like this. Oh. Constant radius. So this one, the R is decreasing. This one, the radius R is constant. Wherever you are, lah, okay, this R is the same as this R, not changing. Spiral means your radius gets smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. So why ah, why is it a spiral and not a radius? Uh, not a not a, not a semicircle. Radius decrease. What does radius decrease tell us about that? So gotta remember the equation that we just proved just now. R equals to MV over BQ. If your radius is getting smaller, something inside the equation must be getting smaller. Mass ah. No, la, mass cannot change. Magnetic flux density is uniform. Q is the particle's charge. So velocity is decreasing. Ooh, why the velocity decreasing? So you got to suggest with a reason. Okay, so the only reason why velocity can decrease is some kind of energy loss, momentum, friction with other particles, collision with other things. So you can say that, lah. We can say, oh, why the why the radius decreasing? Ah? Or oh, because speed is decreasing. You know, say this tangential speed, no, no, but you can say the speed is decreasing. No? So, radius is decreasing. I mean, if you want to go one step further and say, suggest why the speed can decrease, you could say energy loss, momentum loss, energy loss, therefore radius decrease. So this one, one mark when you say uh, radius is decreased. Okay, but why radius decrease? Reason, oh, because speed is decreasing. That's why the sp they move in spiral like that. State and explain what can be deduced from the paths about the charges on the two particles. Charge, ah. from their pattern like that, one like this, one like this. Can you tell the charge? Ah? Well, we know that the charge depends on what we say, uh, left-hand rule, right? So why one turn to the left and one turn to the right is because they are opposite charge. 
One is positive, one is negative. So let's write that first and we'll look more and how to understand that better. So you can say, oh, the, the spiral in different direction, see one spiral to the left, one spiral to the right, or clockwise, anti-clockwise, you can say it that way. So the spiral is in different direction. So what do you know about the charge? Oppositely charge. So spiral in different directions, so both are oppositely charged. One is positive, one is negative. Okay, two marks here. One comes from spiral in different direction. That's your observation. So both are opposite, uh, opp oppositely direction, oppositely charged. Sorry about that. So opposite charge is your answer lah. And the reason why is because they spiral in different direction. So this one is A1. M1. If you are not convinced, let us set up the diagram a little bit and see whether we can convince ourselves or not. Let's say the magnetic field is pointing into the page. So for you, you will point, you take out a finger, your pointing finger, you point at the screen, point all the X, point at the X. Okay, that will be the magnetic field. Let's say lah, we set up. Then at a certain position, let's say at point X, you have some velocity in this direction. Where is the force pointing towards? So you point into the point at the X, stick your middle finger in the direction of the red V arrow. Where is your thumb pointing? Your thumb should point somewhere in this direction. Oh, so for this particular setup, velocity is where a positive particle is moving, right? So that means the positive particle will move to the left. So this one is positively charged. Then the other one, leh, the reverse law has to be negatively charged. Negative. Ah, so that's how you can tell, lo, okay? Negative charge will experience a force to the other way. So that's how we can see. And you want to take a guess, what kind of particle got positive negative? Huh? Maybe it could be something like an electron. Same mass, ma. maybe. Same charge, same mass. So maybe this one is positron. Maybe this one is electron. That's for example. Could be something like that. They have same mass, same magnitude of charge, but one's positive, one's negative. So they will do this nice loopy pattern. Mm, okay. Next one, last one. Uh, state and explain. So state your answer and explain why you say the answer. Mm, what can be deduced from the past about the initial speed of the two particles? Initial speed. Wow, wait, uh, write this equation again. MV over BQ. You see their, their radius, both of it decrease at the same rate, right? They cannot have the same radius. So they should have the same speed. Hmm. So we can say that they have the same initial radius. Same initial radius. So, same initial speed. There we go. So, yeah, lah. if it's different speed, oh, then maybe one will be bigger, the other one will be smaller. Something like that. Then, like, eh, different now. Leh. So here, initial radius is 1 mark, M1. It's therefore, same initial speed. That's your answer, A1. So your reason is the M1. Na. Usually, the reason is the M1. So you must get the M1 in order to get the A1 mark. Otherwise, you lose both. Okay? So these two are kind of basic starter questions to get us thinking about how to apply this um, magnetic field and particles moving around inside. After this, there are going to be a few independent questions where you can do some calculations and do more complicated stuff. I advise you to try those out first um, and then only go and watch the video because those I consider like level up more harder question now on particle physics and, you know, spirally things. But that's all for this basic intro on how to think about questions like this. So I'll see you in the next few example video where we'll have fun looking at all those weird interesting stuff. That's all for this video. See you in the next one.